Okay, let's pray. Father, we, we come to look at your word. We come to look at our society. We come to look at an issue. And, uh, and I pray that you will help us to have eyes that see and ears that hear what you have to say, that you will guide us in this, uh, that you will, uh, yeah, you will reveal your truths uh, and that they will change us and help us to be your people. So I thank you for what you're going to do. And I thank you for the fact that you have given us your word, which is your amazing letter of grace and love to us to help us in our life, our day-to-day -day life, how to be your people. So I thank you for that. Amen. Uh, as I mentioned uh, last month, one of the things that I'm experimenting with uh, this year is, especially in regarding to the message, is that on the fourth Sunday, uh, I want to look at sort of like a current issue or a, and a, a sort of a faith message. And by that, I mean look at what's been happening in the news leading up to this day uh, and then seeing how we might be able to apply God's wisdom to it. Um, so it, it is an experiment and hopefully it'll work. Um, but today, uh, the, the issue I want to look at is COVID-19. Now, I know COVID-19 has been around for a while. You might have noticed that as well. Uh, you know, it's actually sort of nearly coming up to our 12-month anniversary of, of dealing with COVID-19. Um, you know, <laughs> this time last year, we had no idea what was coming. Um, but, I'm, but I'm doing it in the sense of, uh, of asking the question, uh, how can we make the most of this pandemic to reveal God's kingdom? Uh, you know, rather than just being uh, uh, sort of taking the victim approach, like, woe is me, you know, it's COVID-19, and I can't do this, I can't do that, and this has happened, and this is happening. Rather than get up there and say, how can I, Lord, make the most of this moment, this opportunity, this, you know, this COVID-19, to, to further your kingdom, uh, to, to grow as a believer, and to grow uh, a, a, as a witness in our society. Uh, if you've seen the reports, you, you will know that, of course, that the, uh, we had an 84-year-old get the first jab of the Fritz. Is it Frizza? Is, it how, is that how you pronounce it? Pfizer. I keep looking at it and going Frizza, and I'm thinking, I hope it's not a Frizza. Um, I knew I was pronouncing it wrong, but, you know, I was just like, oh, anyway, Pfizer COVID-19. Uh, and then, of course, we had the Prime Minister getting the jab as well. Uh, you know, good on him. He's saying, hey, look, we should. He's doing it himself. Uh, but since then, of course, we've had reports of vaccine delays. Uh, there was that incident of the two who got slightly more than they should have. Um, and, but reports are that they're fine. So that, I mean, that, that's, that's good news. Uh, there was also the reports that, have, you know, about 120 vaccines got thrown out because there could have been a error over storage and um, then there's also the questions about whether it's safe you know given the time frame of vaccines you know because you know, normally it takes years and years and years uh, and what amazes me of course is you know uh, the, one of the things they're saying well that's because we the bureaucracy part of the process was streamlined and I'm going wow yeah yeah when, when you sort of cut through the red tape and just get down to the bare essentials of what you need to do, it's amazing how quickly things can get done. But also, um, there are uh, quite a few movies, and you know that I love movies, and, and there's been TV series uh, about viruses and or cures of viruses that lead people to do become crazy or become a zombie apocalypse or whatever, along those lines. So there's the question, you know, is it, what's the long-term consequences? Uh, I actually, it reminded me, I was like, this, I don't know if you ever saw, remember seeing a series called The Survivor. It was a British series. Post, and anyway, I was like, wow. I'm like, anyway, um, totally off the track there. But also we've got questions about the, with, with the, the vaccine as well. Is it, will we need it to be able to travel? You know, will we have border checks and say, where's your COVID pass? You know, your vaccination pass. Will, will it come to that? Will it be a case of, in order to travel overseas, you'll, you'll need 
the vaccine. To visit nursing homes, where you need to be vaccinated. To work, where you need to be vaccinated. Uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see how those things are going to work out. I'm sure uh, all of us have an opinion of what will happen, and also probably all of us have an opinion on how safe it will be. The reality is COVID-19 has changed our lives, and the very fact that what we're doing today is proof of that. So just a couple of observations. These are my personal observations. These are not scriptural observations. These are my personal observations about uh, COVID-19. Um, it has forced change. The, you know, before COVID-19, we could comfortably coast along doing what we'd always been doing for the last year or years or even months or even weeks. But when COVID-19 hit, uh, at times, it was a day-by-day -day change. Uh, of what we could do and what we couldn't do. We suddenly faced lockdowns. We suddenly faced restricted travel. Um, we had restricted numbers coming together. Uh, you know, it stopped certain activities like sports and going to the movies and, and church. And even something as simple and Aussie as having a barbecue in the picnic, uh, a picnic barbecue in the park. You know, we, all of that forced change upon us you know it changed what we could do and when we could do it and that that meant actually for many of us we became tired due to the constant change and uncertainty uh, you know the because of the resulting increased stress levels that were there now it's true for others it was a great uh, uh, thing because it forced forced them to stop doing certain things um, you know, and they quite enjoyed that, you know, having to travel to work, um, you know, or turn up in your work in your pajamas, you know, or work from bed, you know, uh, or attend church from bed, you know, don't even have to get up in the morning, I can just attend church, you know. Um, so, you know, there were some benefits for some, but for many, it has been tiring because of the constant change and the uncertainty. And for the church, it's meant that many ministries stopped uh, or they had to operate on a restricted format, um, which meant unable to do what we normally do as church. You know, play music. Wasn't it good to sing? Yeah. Post-COVID, we probably wouldn't have got so excited about that. We would have enjoyed it, but we wouldn't have got so excited. Um, you know, Morning tea, you know, it's, we, we got morning tea back um, and the ability to actually chat, you know, those, those things are coming back, we appreciate it. Now, what it has also meant is get, it's given space to new things. If I can't go to church but have to stay at home, um, you know, it's opened up other things I could do. I mean, I could watch, like I said, watch church in bed. Or I could, in fact, you know, it's a beautiful day. I could have church there and be gardening whilst watching church. Or I could even watch church later uh, and do something else on Sunday morning. Given it's coming up to a year since all of this has happened, many of us have developed new habits and different goals when it comes to Sunday morning. And this means church will not be the same. Some will not come back. Some now value church here even more because they know what it means to not have church. You know, some will decide here is, is just part of the faith experience and they'll be more fluid in their connection uh, with the church. Now, all of these changes gives us opportunity to do things differently. It also gives opportunity to explore what God might be doing in our life and the lives of those around us. Opportunities that we might not have been able to see before COVID-19 came along. The passage I've chosen that I had, uh, that Lindsay kindly read out for us is the Ephesians uh, passage from chapter five. Uh, it's probably a passage you know. Um, it's... Uh, it's, it's quite a well-known passage. The, the 
the actual passage itself uh, from 5, uh, 515 to 520 is made up of just two sentences in the Greek. Uh, and the first one being uh, this uh, uh, 15 verses 15 and 16, and the rest being 17 to 20. And what of course says is, you know, Paul's writing to the Ephesians, he says, so be careful how you live. And Paul's what he's doing, he's connecting what he's saying here with what he said earlier. Um, back in verse 2, he said to them, live a life filled with love. I mean, that as Christians, we should be taking every opportunity to, to demonstrate God's love and accept God's love in our lives. And he says, be filled with love. And in verse 8, he says, live as people of the light. Um, in fact, in verse 11, he says, take no part in worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. You know, so we are meant to be people who are filled with love, and living in the light, living in God's grace. And so he says, so, or other translations say, therefore, give careful consideration to how you live or to your Christian walk, which, by the way, isn't meant to be aimless in a casual lifestyle like those who don't have a relationship with Christ, but rather it's meant to have purpose and direction. So he says, give thought to how you live uh, and there is a great opportunity for us to do that now to actually stop and think how am i living how am i going in my faith in my way that i live my faith and the way i demonstrate my faith uh, it's a wonderful opportunity we have and then he goes on to say of course don't live like fools uh, now, Paul is identifying those who are fools are those who actually don't understand who Jesus is. Is you know, it's it's not necessarily they're stupid or anything. They just don't realise who Jesus is. They haven't met Jesus yet. Uh, don't live like fools, but make uh, but like those who are wise. And of course, wisdom is doing things God's way. And it, by the way, it's not just knowledge too. It's interesting, you know, he doesn't say, don't live like fools, but live like those who are academically well qualified to actually quote the Bible. He says, who are wise. In other words, who are able to take what God says and apply it to life. We have this great opportunity to actually stop and think about, well, what is God saying about life? I mean, COVID caused us to pause, to change, so now we have this opportunity to say, well, well, what is, what is that? What's that look like? God, what does it mean to, to live wisely in this situation right now? You know, for people who live in, in love and live in the light, we also are meant to live wisely. And, and that is to walk with what God has said and use it in every day life and, and then he makes which is probably a verse that um i often well not often hear but is quoted reasonably well make the most of every opportunity in these evil days yeah make the most of it uh it's also translated uh, i like this make the best use of the time um which literally means ransom or buy back for yourselves the most precious commodity that you can have, time. You know, it is, is precious because once it's gone, you can't get it back. And how many of us wish we could get it back? You know, only back then I did this or did that. Amazing number of people who talk about that in, in relation to real estate, you know. You know, if only I had bought that block of land back then that was worth 10 pounds now, you know. Who knew that Parramatta was going to be the center of the CBD? Um, <laughs> make the most of every opportunity. You know, and it's and it's make wise use of the time you have and it's not about the length of time it's about 
using the time appropriately. And the reason he says make the most of it is because uh, we are in the days, these days are evil. Uh, he knew that they were going to face persecution. He knew he could see that coming. It was already happening. Um, and he's reminding his readers that we are not living in the promised land. This is not heaven. Uh, you know, this is a place that's been affected by evil. Whatever difficulties we may have in front of us, Paul says, make the most of the opportunities because time is short and you're living in evil days. Now, I need to make confession here. I don't think I score well in what Paul's saying here. As I looked at this passage and thought about this passage, I thought, do I really make the most of every opportunity? Can I say I make the most of most opportunities? Now, I recognize that we are our own worst critics. You know, so I acknowledge that. But I still don't think I score well on this. But also, I want to say I believe I'm not alone in this. I think as a church... And I don't mean this, this church, but the church as a whole. Um, and as Christians in our community, we are not making the most of every opportunity. Even though we know that every time we wake up in the morning, we are one day closer to the Lord's return. And, and I'm not talking about just opportunity to share my faith. Um, though there are those. I mean, all sorts of opportunities. Uh, the opportunity to encourage someone with kind word. Yeah. Just the other day, I thought, oh, you know, someone shared something with me and I you know, talked with them and I, they walked away and I went, you know what? I could have said something to try, you know, to encourage them in that situation. A missed opportunity. The opportunity to help someone. You, know, you hear someone has a need and you go, like for example, you're driving down the road and you see someone who looks like they're broken down. Do you stop? Now, because there's a whole lot of issues there, by the way, safety, you know, all, all sorts of things. So, you know, but there is the opportunity. What is God saying? The opportunity to serve, I'm not going to labor that one. The opportunity to speak God's truth into someone's life, I'm not going to labor that. But how about this one? The opportunity to grow my faith. You know, the opp missed opportunities where I'm going, Lord, I, I didn't actually talk to you about this. You know, I didn't ask what your opinion on this is. See, in the COVID-19 situation, we have lots of opportunities to grow in our faith because, you know, the, the vaccine is not the cure all. It's, a, it's to immunize you against a particular virus, but it won't change life circumstances. It won't change your relationship with God or relationship with others. So if I'm hanging out for the vaccine, is somehow my cure... Maybe I need to talk to God about where I'm placing my trust. And lastly, the opportunity to pray. To pray for someone, to pray about something, to pray for myself and say, Lord, I need your help. They're just a, a few of the sorts of opportunities that have been lost. And so what to do about it? I could do nothing and be satisfied with how things are. That's an option. And that is a temptation too. Or I could start to think seriously about what Paul says and what God has to say elsewhere in his word. To ask for forgiveness for missing opportunities and for the wisdom to make the most of opportunities that he will present before me. 
who knows, maybe one of those opportunities is this right now. To actually reassess and think about how do I make the most of my opportunities. The great thing about, of course, is that I can ask for forgiveness. I mean, I have a God who says, I forgive you, not you blew it. You know, I set everything up for you and you didn't take the opportunity. You know, go away. That's not our God. Our God is when we come to him and we say, I think I missed that one, Lord. I don't think I was listening to you. I think I was sort of focused on what I thought. Give me for that. He's the God who goes, I forgive you. And I'll give you another opportunity. Be ready. We have a very gracious God. If you feel you have let him down, if you feel that, you know, no, I don't make the most of every opportunity. I don't think I make the most of most opportunity, most opportunities that come my way. Come to him and ask him for forgiveness. And ask him to help you do that. He has said, my burden is light. He's not going to pound you. He's not going to pound me because I haven't got this right. But he is going to say, well, let's work at making the most of every opportunity coming your way. Paul goes on in his second sentence, which I don't want to go in depth because really the focus of today is thinking about those opportunities that are before me. But he does, he, he kind of ex, uh, expands on what he said before. He says, don't, don't act thoughtlessly or be foolish and squander your opportunities. But I love how he does this balance. It's a classic, you know, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Uh, by the way, what the Lord wants you to do, who can tell us that? Jesus summed it up in those two, those two commands. Love God with your entire being. Love your neighbor as yourself. Or as he commanded, this command I give to you, love one another. You know, we don't have to sit back and say, God, what is it you want me to do? He's made it pretty clear. In fact, we have, it's not a lack of instruction that will stop us. It's actually a, often an area of under, misunderstanding or lack of understanding and a lack of obedience. Paul says, don't, you know, you don't act thoughtlessly and understand what the Lord wants you to do. Then he goes, he gives a classic example, probably because it was a big issue in his day. Don't be drunk with wine because it ruins your life. Um, one of the most foolish ways to waste opportunities is to get drunk. Uh, even the Greek and Roman pagans knew drunkenness to be wrong, although they often succumb to it. Uh, you know, and the prodigal son wasting his inheritance is a great example of what it means to ruin your life. Instead, he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And being filled with the Holy Spirit is the perfect opposite of getting drunk uh, on wine. You know, both are alternatives which people can choose to cope with life, uh, especially since these days are evil. Uh, they have a profound but opposite effect on the way uh, we speak to others and the way we treat others. Uh, being around a drunk can, depending on what sort of drunk they are, can be very awkward and very scary. Being around someone filled with the Holy Spirit, that's good. That's exciting. You sort of want to even though it's a COVID restriction and you can't get one up, but it's a, you do want to sort of rub shoulders with them. You probably do the elbow. They're mutually exclusive. You, you can't be filled with one and, and be filled with the other. Uh, interestingly enough, though, being filled with the spirit, people thought, you know, on the day of Pentecost, they were drunk. But unlike wine, 
or alcohol, the spirit doesn't deaden our intellect and our abilities, but enhances them to God's purposes. So he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Sing with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs among yourselves. Well, we've done that and we've practiced that. See, we're already putting into practice what you know, Paul is saying here. You know, we're praising God and we're praising it together to encourage each other, to, to support each other. You know, singing together has an impact. And then he says that right at the end, of course, give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, as Christians, we have access to our Heavenly Father because of what Jesus has done for us. You know, we have the privilege of prayer. And that's why I said earlier, you know, I've missed opportunities to pray, talking to my Father. And Paul is saying here, give thanks for everything. Have you thanked God for COVID-19? Some have gone, yes, Lord, because I can sit back and relax because I don't have to do all these things. Others of us are going, mm, I'm not sure about that because it's really been a pain you know, and a nuisance and caused all sorts of heartache. Paul says, hey, give God thanks for opportunities here because they were opportunities to grow, to share, to be God's people in those situations. So, I, in looking at these verses and also thinking about COVID-19, I have a request. It's not a challenge. It's just a request. That request is that you will pray this prayer or something like this when you have your two-way conversation with your Lord and Saviour as we come up to Easter, you know, next Sunday, Easter will be a month away. So in March, praying, praying this prayer or something like this prayer. And the prayer is, Lord, forgive me for the opportunities I've let pass and help me make the most of future opportunities you will provide me. Opportunities to grow, opportunities to love, opportunities to speak, and opportunities to serve. Give me a heart and mind that sees what you provide and make the most of it. Amen. Like I said earlier, verse, I mean, Paul says, make the most of every opportunity. I don't think I'll score well, but I don't want to stay in that spot of don't think I score well. I want to score better. You know, so if I'm saying oh, six, I'm going to aim for an eight. I might get seven. I hope I get seven at least. In fact, I'm thinking about it. I'll probably get a seven. But I would like to get eight. One of the ways I can do that is in part of my prayer life, praying this to remind me to be on the lookout for opportunities. When you pray in the morning, pray during the day, whatever time, just think about praying something like this, praying for those opportunities to share, especially around COVID. Um, you know, when the talks about vaccines come up, one of the things I thought of was going, yep, but it can't cure my problem with God. I swear I need Jesus. Hopefully we see where that goes. If I get an opportunity to drop that line somewhere, I'll let you know. Ed, um, for that opportunity, hopefully I, I, I see it and grab it. Let's make the most of the opportunities. Our time is short. People need Jesus. We need Jesus. Let's make the most of the time we have. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to acknowledge that don't always get it right, don't always uh, take what you have told us and apply it all the time, don't, yeah, don't at times feel like you're doing a 
did such a good job. And yet, at the same time, you're going to, you tell us, well, that's because I'm going to work in you and through you, and you just need to trust me. So help us to do that, to trust you. Forgive us when we haven't followed the, your ways. Forgive us when you have asked us to do something and we've missed it or we've ignored it. And help us to, with wisdom and grace, your wisdom, your grace, your love, your strength and power, make the most of the opportunities that you put before us. Lord, help us to be your people. Help us to just be amazed at what you're doing. Especially as the days are getting shorter and shorter to when you return. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Amen.